Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio Success Express Business and Career Show. So San Diego employment attorney Ward Heinrichs comes on our show every fourth Wednesday. So it's Wednesdays with Ward. We love it. And he's back on the show today to talk about the newly passed Fast Recovery Act for fast food workers. He was on the show a few months ago talking about it and it was a big deal, but it's really a big deal now that it is passed. It's a big deal for the workers. And I have to say this before we bring him on. He said so, and he wants me to make sure to say that he said so because his predictions always come right. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he's he's right about this. He knows, uh, and you can go to his website, bestemploymentattorneysandiego.com. See, I don't even have to look at my notes for this ward. How are you? Welcome you, back. You just rifle that off so well. It's amazing. Good it's job. The best domain name. I've always, I always tell everybody, Ward has the best domain name on the. He's you know he he knows his domain and he's aggressive in court, right? <laughs> Super aggressive. I added in, in court. I said in court. I was really good. Yes. But this, let's talk about this, uh, the Fast Recovery Act. Can you just give everybody an overview? Because it did change the, pa- in. I didn't want to say in its passing, that sounds bad, but it did change up a little bit from when you first came on the show. But give everyone just an overview of what it what it is. Yeah. And there were some significant changes. I'm sure we'll get into those. But uh, the the, the genesis of it was to get the fast food industry some common um, regulations about all parts of the fast food industry, you know, health and safety, wages, training, you know, all, many, many different things. And so what they did was they put this council together or the, the law allows for a council to be appointed mostly by the governor uh, that will take into consideration all those different aspects of the fast food industry, uh, you know, the health and safety, the wages, et cetera, and Mm -hmm. will pass new regulations on that within the confines of the law, which is um, the Fast Recovery Act. Mm -hmm. So basically it is like, because even this, it's like having a council say, and, and some, and people from the fast food industry will be part of it, right? Some actual workers are part of this. So it's not just the muckety mucks. So no, this, absolutely. And this was the important part of it. This mm. is real close to union representation. It's not mm-hmm. quite ah. the same, but it's it's more like what they do in Europe, where they have sector unionization and union representation. So it's not quite that. It's not the same thing as union re- representation, but it's there. It's it's a sector wide, meaning fast food industry is a sector um, mechanism for representation of the workers in fast food industry. Okay. Okay, so now when they're mm-hmm. gonna pick, they're gonna pick a couple, right? Uh, fast food workers oh, to do this. Yeah, How does right. this happen? I mean, yes. would you wanna be the person who puts their hand up saying, I wanna represent? I mean, there's always the hall monitor, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so the way they did this was really interesting. They changed it up from uh, the original legislation that, you know, you know how legislation is, it's sausage when it comes out. It's like grinding up sausage. You so, said sausage, sausage said is coming sausage. up October 1st. Sorry, continue on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it's I hope fast I can food remember sausage. what I was talking about. Oh, no, I, know, I do. So, yeah, how's it um, so this council is made up of 10 different representatives. Mm-hmm. And there are eight of those representatives are appointed by the governor. And two of them are appointed by um, the legislature is one of them, um, and then there's a count, another agency that's related to the governor uh, and uh, economics uh, that also appoints one of these people. So the 10 people are, well, th- th- there's actually six groups, I would call it, but the, uh, two of those of 10 belong to our representatives of what they call the franchisee, and two more are representatives of the Franchise or, and then mm-hmm. two two further representatives are representative of the employees that do fast food work, and then there's two more who are advocates uh, for the employees in the fast food industry. I'm not sure the difference. I'm thinking those two are probably union people, but I'm not sure. And then there's a representative from the division of uh, uh, division of labor. 
And then there's uh, a representative from the, uh, again, the Governor's Council of Economics and Welfare, something like that. So, so how do they, so they choose what you them? They end up having, well, yeah, now this is the interesting part. What, what you end up having is the governor, who does favor employees generally, appointing eight of those people, and four of them are f- for the franchisor or the franchisee. So that's the business side. But right. I'm just wondering where you find that group. Do, do the franchise exactly. say, hey, we want this guy? Or, and, and the governor goes, nah, I'm going to pick this guy. I, mean, I have no idea how that's going to work. Um, he, he's going to drive through McDonald's and say, hey, yo, want to come work over here? Are they the representative of the franchisor? I, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think, you know, I have to look at the legislation again. I did read it, uh, but I, I don't but, think they defined what a representative is. I'm really sure they didn't. Um, but just to be sure, I'd have to look again. Yeah, but, you know, I think it's, I think it's a weird, it's cool, you, but it, it sounds it, like cool a things to it. It sounds like a union because how, okay, two representatives of fast food employees. Well, who represents employees other than a lawyer? Well, this is for the fast food yeah, union. Yeah. Right, who's, right. Who's going to represent the employees? I think it's important that they do have a voice because from what I've heard, well, yeah. like, there are but, a lot of them, because this is kind of an interesting thing right now because there's people who go, well, fast food should be for people stepping up like it should be for teenagers you know having a quick job on the side uh, college students you know that kind of thing but our country has seen a shift in you know and there's a shift in industry and we have to remember that it's like we've gone from coal to solar we've gone from print magazines Mm -hmm. to digital I mean you've got to think about where our not just this country, but this world has been. And so there's people in the middle that have kind of, they're they're in the middle of it and people are living longer. I mean, you see most Walmart readers are retirees. You know, you, I, I was talking to a guy in a grocery store, a high-end grocery store actually. And he was, he's like, no, I'm, I'm just, you know, he's checking people out for just, I went out of the house and he can make a little money on the side because people are living longer. So when it comes to fast food, this is no longer just teenagers out of school or in school doing a learning a job and and making some pocket money. So there's been a pushback from a lot of people about that kind of thing. But the reality is our country has shifted. And so there are people that this is their job and they don't have the medical insurance. They don't have the the wages to actually really keep their family afloat and depending on where you live that might be your only way to have a job depending on your situation so that that's i think part of why this fast recovery act is there because we're finding a bigger swath of ages inside that industry than it used to be and i yeah. know because we travel yeah. <laughs> and it's I, would, I would agree with that um mm-hmm. i think Back in the day, when I remember going to McDonald's and Burger Chef in Indiana, there was a thing called Burger Chef. Um, you have In and Out in San Diego. Everyone's jealous of that. Oh yeah, In and Out's pretty darn good. Uh, yeah. I like Carl's Jr. too, but honestly, I don't hit fast food very often because it yeah. just sticks to your ribs. But yeah, anyway. it's not good. Yeah. Anyway, um, when I remember back in the day, there were permanent employees working for these places. But they were usually managers or at least mm-hmm. system managers and so right. older people, more experienced people doing that. And, but now I I have seen whenever I do go through a line to get my daughter some French fries. Um, you know, some older people right there at the counter and handing food through the window. Mm-hmm. So I think you're right that I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I haven't read much about it. Um, I've read a little bit about it. And then and the anecdotal evidence I'm ge- giving does seem to match what's uh being written about Mm -hmm. and people getting some help is not a bad thing um i just think it's a shift and they needed a way to avoid so but i think what nancy was getting to is this is an interesting thing not just for the fast food industry if there's going to be this in between because i know they're talking about this fast food recovery act going beyond california of course california starts new york washington like we always talk about on the show but could this be a uh lightning rod for other industries that are underrepresented 
Well, that's one thing people are thinking is in the future. And but more immediately, they are talking about this fast recovery act or something very similar to it for fast food industry uh, migrating to other states. And they mentioned Washington, Oregon and New York, uh, Eastern Seaboard. So that's probably where you see it next. And I think you're going to. Um, mm-hmm. And we'll just see what the legislation really is there and um, how big the trend is. And so it, health benefits are part be of it. Equal. What about minimum wage? How does this affect minimum wage that as minimum wage has been increasing every year, right? As, as we talked over the shows, is this going to change minimum wage? How do, yeah, how does that affect it? Because I know, well, isn't there just like a standard already for California? There is a standard already. And what we're the standard we have right now in place is fourteen dollars an hour statewide for employers of twenty five or fewer employees, and fifteen dollars an hour for employers who have twenty six or more employees. Um, and but it, we're all the whole state is supposed to go to fifteen dollars an hour, uh, no matter what size of employee or employer you are, um, mm. next year. So everyone's going to be fifteen. But I just read something that said that they're already doing a cost of living increase. It's actually going to be fifteen dollars and fifty cents next year for everyone in California. But that and that doesn't include different cities that may have higher minimum wages than that. Oh wow! Yeah, because isn't the federal rate like that's the low of the low? Like you have to do that. But if different states want to pay more or can pay more, then that's what's going to happen. That, that's so the, true. Yeah, that's so like kind of like when the feds will step in yeah. is when, okay, now you've, you've violated federal law. Mm-hmm. Which does happen. Sometimes the same violation at a workplace will violate both federal and state law. And state law, yeah. But mm-hmm. more often in California, you see just a violation of state law since California offers employees more benefits. Yeah, mm-hmm. so California can say, hey, this is what you're going to do. And then even city versus like, Julian versus San Diego, like Julian up in the mountains versus San Diego. Mm-hmm. Julian's unincorporated, Hummel, Hakumba, Alpine, you're all un- unincorporated. And then it comes out to San Diego proper where you are like, that's two different laws. Yes. Depending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So minimum most wage too, is it, is it the same for? Well, minimum wage and sick leave are usually the things that are different in uh, municipalities. Um, and in San Diego, the San Diego minimum wage is 15 no matter what size, $15 an hour, no matter what size um, the employer is. So if you're inside the city, that's what it is. And uh, there's also a minimum, a, a larger minimum number of sick days that are afforded mm-hmm. employees too in San Diego. It's actually twice as much. It's 40 hours at the state level and Oh, hold on. Oh, no, it's <laughs> it's 24 hours or three days at the state level and 40 hours or five days at the, at the city level. And then wow. with this oh. Fast Recovery Act, did I read correctly? And everyone, uh, Ward's got a follow up article to this on blendradioandtv.com. So just type in Fast Recovery, type in Ward, you'll find all kinds of articles and interviews. But did I read correctly that this could make the minimum wage for fast food employees go over twenty dollars. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. So the legislation that's a big it, jump. Like I'm serious. Mm-hmm. That's pretty massive. It is. And I have to say, I'm just thinking, what about the other uh, yeah. you know, industries that aren't yeah. fast food related that are sitting there thinking, well, if you work Why at a them? fast food restaurant, maybe you'll get twenty-two dollars an hour next year. I'm not picking. I can only get anymore. fifteen. Yeah, I, me. yeah. It, that doesn't sound right to me. It sounds very. Is um, it twenty-three dollars? Twenty-four. I don't know what would be the word for. It's not sexist or racist. It's categorizationist. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah, or just, because, <laughs> or just damned expensive for labor. I mean, <laughs> but, but I mean, <laughs> but it doesn't seem like just because you don't work in fast food that you should get less of a minimum wage. And because well, no, you, that's not that's not what this is about. It's if you work in men in fast food industry, you'll get an increased minimum wage potentially. Now, here, let me explain. Okay. Um, the the law includes an excess or, or uh, an amount of minimum wage that's potential 
beyond what the minimum wage is for the rest of the state, wherever. And a city could make it even larger if they want to, but none have. So it'd be mm. so if and and the max the ceiling that the legislature set on that for fast food workers is twenty two dollars an hour. So when oh. when the council convenes. One thing they'll probably talk about is increasing the minimum wage for fast food workers, and that'll be a different minimum wage than any other worker in the state. Now, of course, wow. the city may match it. Who knows? I don't know. But they could increase it way beyond what the, the, the most the, the largest minimum wage I've seen is in Berkeley and shoot, another city up in the Bay Area. Uh, that's seven seventeen dollars and ten cents. So it's very well, it's it's a possibility that the council could say, hey, we want to make it $18. So they'll be so fast food workers, if that's the case, uh, will have an $18 hour minimum wage. It'll be greater than any other minimum wage in the whole state. Wow. This is interesting. But, and it, but it, that it could, doesn't really that's, make sense. Well, it's hard. You know what? Like what well, I was doesn't listening to, because some of the okay. cases I've heard is people they can't afford to go to the dentist. They can't afford to. Well, I know, but is, but why? Okay, only fast food work because it seems to me that it should be for all of everyone. Work. That's why, but yeah. that's why the minimum yeah. wage thing was there as a general like lift to everybody. You no, know? but this is a specific bill just for fast food workers because they're realizing people that is their job now you know people go in and they're working fast food i mean that's that's why i was saying about it's not just kids it's not a part-time job for teenagers getting pocket money anymore it's changed um there and, and it depends on where you live you know for these and this also changes according to how big the company is which that was another change that i noticed in the bill yeah. right yeah, so like it's not that. just specifically didn't mcdonald's kind of beat down on this a little bit or whatever well i'm Ooh. sure they weren't in favor and and there yeah. were uh, many franchisors who were um advocating against it and because it was there. targeted at the big brands basically and i think mostly they... well if if you recall um the original legislation that came out of the uh the assembly which is like the House of Representatives, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. They they said if the franchisor had 30 or more sites, you know, different restaurants uh, throughout the nation, then this would apply. Now they've said they've raised it to 100 or more, which to me probably is fairer because, you know, the mom and pops are going to have a much harder time with that. And mm -hmm. you know, 30, 100, you know, I don't know. But it sounds like that, there's going to be some breaks for small businesses that probably really do need it because that's going to it will increase their costs pretty dramatically. Yes, yeah, it will. Because there's fast mm -hmm. food shops that you know just are mom and pop. Like we talked about Angelo's last time you were on talking. I still want my Angelo's burger. <laughs> I remember talking about it, but I've never been to Angelo's. Yeah, dude, really dude, good. dude, good. dude, dude, dude. I gotta go. Gotta go. Dude. Gotta go. I'm At least saying. the last time we were there, and their workers will be pay, be paid much better by the time I go. Yeah, and maybe that. Well, not them because they don't have a hundred uh, different restaurants in the nation. See, that's so, it. See, just, that's the thing. I, is it going to be where someone who works in a hospital is paid less than someone who works? She in went to the hospital school. last time. She's back at the hospital thing. Well, because, because I'm, yeah, you no, know, yeah. just there's a difference in. I I think actually hospitals are going to be out of it because there's really not. A franchisee franchise for yeah, hospitals. That's so true. I don't think that's a big problem there. Um, mm -hmm. But there are some of the way some of these mm -hmm. these things are de defined will exclude, for instance, restaurants that are inside a grocery store. So the, no no oh. matter if they have a, a thousand of those throughout the country, they they won't be uh, part of this. They they won't be affected by the fast. Okay, food what about Starbucks program. inside a grocery store? Uh, Starbucks. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. Interesting. Starbucks but, is, they're over a hundred. Yeah. They're yeah. They're over a hundred. Easy. So I don't yeah. think that's going to. Um, all right. So let's say there's now very interesting yeah. though, a Starbucks in a grocery store. If they serve food, maybe very interesting. I had they, that. they have buns and stuff. They, they have, have their like, own problems. Lately. Well, but there's, but grocery <laughs> stores have delis like Safeway has a deli. Yeah. And it, my understanding again, 
you know, I just read it and I'm not sure of all the details, but my understanding was, well, if you have a restaurant and a grocery store, you're exempt. But, you know, they defined it very carefully. So I can't say for sure that all these places are or aren't in, but I know that there's the possibility they certainly are. You know what? This is so fascinating because, Mm -hmm. you know, we just did upstate New York. We drove across and did every toll part of every toll road of the eastern seaboard (sighs) across the if if there's a toll road, we did it apparently on this one trip. Oh yeah, you gotta be careful with toll roads out east. You don't want to pay all that money. You gotta figure it out. Dude, dude, they nailed us everywhere we went. And I mean, we apparently we were in New Jersey, Nancy. I didn't well, know we it's went to not New Jersey. like they tell you but, before you get on. No, they do kind of. They're like, too bad, but, but not really. But anyway, well, you gotta know. Yeah. almost anything that's a turnpike is yeah. done. No, yeah. we knew, but I mean, I didn't anyway. We end up going on toll roads <laughs> all in upstate New York. And it's a different system than the highways that were used in the West. Like you have your rest area and you can, you know, do whatever. And I always said they should have like, you know, a restaurant at the restaurant at the rest areas. I mean, they'd make a killing, you know, I always just think this could be commercial. Well, upstate New York, like this is one commercial highway. They have a gas station. They have a McDonald's pizza. I mean, the restroom, they have information, little visitor kiosks. I mean, this is like it. And we kept going. But is it like our rest areas? Like we can just stop for you know a couple hours, close my eyes, and get back on the road. And you could, yeah, we could, Nancy, and we really. did. But yeah, we could. But they had McDonald's all the way across, mm-hmm. and we went. I think we were ten minutes early for McDonald's to open. And he said, "Sorry, we're not allowed to. We're the toll. We're the toll McDonald's. We're not allowed to serve uh-huh. this at this time." And I'm like, "What's that?" Anyway, so we went around the parking lot and we could go get our, oh, we wanted French fries early. I don't know what, what, I don't know. It's the French fries again, but we were there and I'm driving and I'm going, oh my God, could you imagine this is like, there, it feels like these, these toll booth enterprises, which are smart. I mean, it's a smart business model, right? Mm -hmm. There, I mean, it's like go in, get your food, go to the bathroom, gas up. I mean, everyone's making money and it's not exactly less money. And you're no, getting charged it's, toll. It's a little it's more then, expensive. And I'm just going to mm-hmm. say, when you get over to Ohio, excuse me, your toll roads suck because you have potholes. But anyway, New York did good. Okay. <laughs> Indiana, sorry. I know okay. you live in Indiana. Your toll roads suck too. But you've got they don't potholes. have too many in Indiana. I think yeah, there are they some did where, up north. No, up this north? one side, it was as you're coming through this one teeny portion I no. just needed to go like two miles and I got nailed. But anyway, pothole, pothole, pothole. Uh, we were doing fine. Lots of potholes. We were so fine w- going through New York. But as soon as Ohio nailed us, just pothole, pothole, uh, traffic jams on a toll road and more expensive. But <clears throat> New York, clean, beautiful roads. Even wildlife refuges, some of the best wildlife refuges mm. we've been to. I'm just going to give them a big shout out. Cool. But it feels like you are in the middle of nowhere, but you're really not. But it's you do feel that way. So when you think about all these workers doing the gas stations, doing I mean, gas stations have food, too, by the way. Like, let's think about all those little food marks, all the loves. Yeah. All of yeah. those. They have uh-huh. fast food. Well, well hold Ooh. on. Hold on. Now, you got to be careful about the fast food because it's defined by a place where you pay in advance for prepared, uh, pre-prepared food. Um, what's the other big mm. one? Uh, uh, oh gosh, I, wait, I have it right here. I'll have to read it. Um, immediate consumption. That was a big one. Pay in advance, prepared in advance and no table service. So if, you know, like a Seven Eleven, mm. maybe yeah. the little now, but it's so mixed, you know, I think that's more of one of those, like the grocery store where you sell everything mm. else and then you're, you have to sell a little food. So I'm not sure 7-Eleven would be part of that, but I think it meets that definition, you know, pre prepared in advance. Yeah. Prepay for oh, I guess you don't prepay. Now you don't prepay at 7-Eleven. And you don't, and you I don't there's no table place, there's no place to sit except your car. But fast food, yeah, because fast food you don't need to have a table. You just drive. But if they through, come you to your car with it. They well, no, prevent that. it's it's little or no table service. So there's not much. I mean, yeah. no one comes by your table. Sometimes they'll come and give you a cup of coffee. And that's about it. 
and they'll wipe up after you're done. But other than that, you're just you grab your food from the counter and you sit and down you and eat it. no one's waiting and, on. And you hope yeah. the bathroom is clean. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just but gonna say no, a flat I think no on that. I think we can all hope. So I'm going and back yes, to the New I'm York on these say a flat no on that. because they had pizza, they had <laughs> McDonald's, they had all of and these were all name brands. And I'm like, damn, they're smart, you know. Because you've they've got you. There is no real like you're you're if you're hungry and you didn't bring stuff, that's what you're doing. And you also feel like you should like you've paid this toll road, but are you on this like private? It's a different vibe. I should call them yeah, out. But no, I, you know I've done because I used you know I grew up in Indiana, yeah. but then we'd go to Pennsylvania where my mom had family you know, in Philadelphia. Family, yeah, so we did we took the toll road all the time. Yeah, you know, I know what it's like. I get it. and you know it's, what. There's some beautiful places along those toll roads. Oh, there. Erie Canal. True. Like, think about mm -hmm. Erie Canal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all along there. It's, it's beautiful. But um, I think, you know, when you think about these employees having to go in on the toll roads, <laughs> they. I wonder if they pay their car passes to get on the toll road. I'm just saying. Do it's employees, the easy pass. See, think about this. The easy, Might be a yeah, good the Easy, easy no. pass, yeah. And then yeah. I, was, I was just thinking, like, I bet you New York State does this. I have a funny feeling because they're going off. They're in the middle of nowhere. So it seems, you know, it feels like it, but it's not true, but it feels like it. They're going, they're having to trek more than like in a city. You know what I mean? They're trekking far to yeah, go to work sure. at a McDonald's. Sure. So there's going to be some kind of something with this. So it's going to be interesting to see it move across the country. And then the next level, mm -hmm. other so what you're really saying is, is it'll be interesting to see how uh, uh, legislation like the Fast Recovery Act would apply in New York under some of the circumstances you've talked about. Yeah, and, and then other, other industries, industries applying this too. Like, right. I think this industries. is going to be the balance between, you, mm -hmm. like Nancy was saying, unions and government. Because it's going to be that balance. I mean, if like, I'm going to go back to working in a school or working in a hospital, why should you get paid less? minimum wage than a fast food worker? Why are they the special group? You know, and are they going by ability, intellect, experience, or are they just going by a classification of fast food? You, that's what I'm not yeah. getting here. Well, yeah, and I, and I hear you on that. Yeah. And I also hear what Lisa's saying. Lisa's saying, well, there's, you know, some type of informal recognition that people are really making this a more permanent employment situation than what yeah. it used to be. So I get that. I have to say my heart does still is with you on this one, Nancy. It's just like, mm. wow, do they really deserve more minimum wage than anyone else? What I, about know, people picking? Listen, I know I've been picking yeah. eggplant and there's little thorny little suckers Sorry, on there and it hurts. That's not and you're hurt, food, and you're, so you're, you're getting out. hurt. You get no. hurt with but oil and your, whatever, that but, makes you a farm worker, not a fast food worker. So you get to get hurt. But you're working and you get not harder. Money. I think farm workers work really hard just because well, I've just been so doing a little you're, teeny now you're coming, bit of it. Well, but you're coming, you're coming wait, wait, wait. Are side. farm workers minimum wage workers? I'm not sure that's true. Um, in some cases, don't play they, attorney ward. <laughs> no, I think it. I think in some cases they may be. But then I, we, I don't sure. want to go into the migrant. Yeah, but that's that's the whole that's thing. I'm thinking, go. but this model is interesting because they do have representatives from that are actual workers. And I think that's, I want to know how that happens. I'm very curious about how that happens, how they're going to choose well, the workers. And I'm and not I think sure that that they're workers. They're representative of the workers. They're not yes, necessarily see, workers. But who votes for them? I want to know who votes exactly. for the workers. The, the, so I'm playing far, Lord of the Flies. It is far, yeah, well, that could happen too. <laughs> but um, the governor appoints these people. And so yeah. to me, I mean, the governor has the say-so. So to me, know, but, well, from what pools is he picking? I yeah, mean, yeah. exactly. What if he picks two people to represent the employees who have never worked in fast food? That could happen. I think I honestly, you know, again, I'd have to reread the legislation. It's pretty long, but I don't remember seeing anything in there about that. And my feeling is I, I'm trying to be really careful about saying something that's not in there. Mm -hmm. But my feeling is that the governor really can pick anyone they want. I assume he'll be logical about it. 
well, it's kind of like the president <laughs> picking picking his cabinet of people for certain things and his certain yeah, task force to that. And, and things like that. And and if you pick the wrong people, everyone's going to yell at you. So like if he goes and gets like a slow food person, like if he went for Alice Waters, it's not going to work. But actually, he should. But if she no, but... to give some information about restaurant work. But so that you know, to me, it it, it you have to. I, we just have to watch it play out because. No matter what's yeah, written down and, right. and out there, it's gonna. We have to watch it play out. I think we're gonna be talking about this all next year. And but I, think, I think it's gonna go from California. It's gonna go up the western coast, and then it's gonna move east. Yep, state by state by state. Well, I'm not gonna agree with you there. I don't. Really? There's so, there's first. way New more. Cons- yeah, I think New York, uh, New York Vermont, Midwest, New Jersey, no. New Jersey. Okay, so it can go all the way to the no. country and stop at New Jersey and New York. <laughs> well, and you see, the middle of America Florida tends to be more conservative, know. and I would say this yeah. is a pretty progressive piece of legislation. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure middle America is going to buy on the, off on this, but we'll Arizona see. Arizona might, because we'll Arizona is getting interesting. Arizona is a very interesting state right now. It, who knows? That could Many people could from go. California have moved to Arizona. <laughs> I know. That's so, what yeah. I'm saying. So people are just going to keep moving east until the law changes and they'll all move back west again. Yeah. It's Well, this is going to be interesting. But I, I do think that as this moves and changes and it's probably going to have, it could go back to the table again, right? If it's not working well and people you raise up Yeah, there's it. a sunset on it. Um, mm. I think oh. it's six years. Yeah, that's right. So, I think it's oh, uh, 2029. 20, they revisit it. Wow. See, so that could happen. And, and at the same time, this could move on into other states and they may well, do it differently. And California will go, oh, so we didn't think of that. Does, but does that another, mean, like, I just it's... think other industries like grocery stores, I see, I think grocery stores after COVID, people started to realize what grocery store workers went through and what they did. So I see other industries like that, some yeah. certain retail in these stores doing it you know maybe so, so now grocery stores know. at least in san diego and i'm assuming throughout california are more union representative than a lot of other sectors mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i, I remember so. albertson's having their big but, strikes and people walking right. outside and, yeah yeah and we still see that you know with certain they should do this for teachers chains. so okay i want to go back to this sunset <laughs> well, see, thing. teachers are in unions but the governor yes. can prevent them from striking Really? Then what's, then what's yeah. the point? Well, what's maybe the, the government of- maybe the governor says well, you can strike. You know, it's it's up to that up to him. Um, wow. But but that but because but, the, the the reason why there's a prevention in there is, you know, you're doing a public service for the kids. You don't want to screw up the kids, so I might make. I know, but work. okay. But then I'm going to go back to hospital workers. They can't strike either. Then. Yeah, I don't think they. Oh, boy, that's they, a good question. I think the governor has a say so in that too. I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh, oh. I've got like ten questions for our next show already. Like, well, seriously, I, you know, I just want to say fun areas people... here where I'm not 100. percent Yeah, we didn't. We yeah, didn't. But, we, yeah, we're we're. Yeah. But this is but this is interesting. Sure. But you know, before people vote, they really should think about <laughs> for well, all that, all sides. But of, when you look at some of of the balance of power and who gets to decide what and how long it lasts i want to go back to the sunset thing is like six years if this if this doesn't really work all that well it's going to take six years before they even look at changing it or does it i mean does it mean they have to look at it oh um All right. So normally the way those things work is it doesn't prevent the legislature from taking action in between and changing it. It's not like it's the same thing for six years, but it could be. And even if they change the legislation, there's still a six year period where they have to. And it might be modified a little bit. And I'm just talking generally. This Mm -hmm. is generally how these things work. Mm -hmm. Um, They can they'll look at the whole legislation no matter what the amendments are and decide whether they want to continue it whether they need to okay. it again you know something like that okay that's that's right. better because i like well, you're stuck with it for six years no matter what i'm like but that's again kinda... this is this is for fast food you know over a hundred shops you know so that means some of the bigger big i mean you're talking about the yeah. really big ones but you're also talking about like franchises and this is a hundred just in the state or nationwide nation just in Oh, nationwide. So it could be like 
Angelo's expanded wow. nationwide, but they're at the hundred mark. So not as big as McDonald's, but they're in that middle zone. They'll still call them a small hmm. business, which is weird to me. If you've got a hundred shops, you franchised out because oh, of franchises. Right. No, That's I think right, the big. franchisor has a pretty big business, but each franchisee it's isn't a, a big business. It's exactly. right. I mean, it might do pretty well, but it's not a big business. No. Yeah. See, that's so, the thing. So fast food, before you go, Ward, All right. what do you want on your plate? <laughs> if you're going to go through a drive through what do you want? Like right now for dinner? Because right now it's dinner time and I keep oh. looking at these French fries and I'm sorry, but I want malt vinegar on the French fries right now. But that's I can't good too. Like malt, I do, malt vinegar. Yeah. But you know what? I like the chips with malt vinegar better because they're just big and you get a lot of vinegar in there. And, yeah. But... <laughs> You know, English okay. chips I'm talking about. Like, yeah. English, yeah, real English well, they chips. Call like, well, you did fish, fish and chips. Slop. Yeah, they yeah slop, slop, slop chips. That's what we used to call slop them. Slop chips. But oh, that's South okay. African. That's South Fair African, enough. I think. Oh, is that South African? I yeah, think. yeah. So Here they call them French fries. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's slop. slop and wars. Sloppy, because sometimes <laughs> you have them where they're really fried and like that. And then there's the slop chips where it's, they're not like hard on the edges. They're sloppy. They're mushy. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. yeah, they're not All as right. good as what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. That's but my good. question is still pending, and I'm going to answer it. So, because he's aggressive. I, you know me. If it's fast food, I really like Carl's Jr.'s. <laughs> so. What What are you doing? Are you doing the double triple? Like, are you doing the big stacky thing? Or well, I used chicken? to, but you know, I've I've lost 25 pounds, by the way, and for you. partly good because for I'm you. watching what I eat. Well, a lot. Good, good, good for you. So, um, I I do like their. Uh, burgers with jalapenos in it and, and they call them different things at different times uh, Jal jalapeno bacon burger sometimes it's called Ooh, bacon, bacon burger you yeah. said bacon oh, you well, said i just bacon. like those and i do prefer <laughs> two patties to one um but i kind of avoid yeah. the two patties anymore but that's hey, a lot but good, of good job though of, on your mm. health that's awesome i'm losing weight mm. from picking peppers right now because i pick peppers nope yeah I've don't say it I've, you can't I say just, it. I just said it, and I didn't mean it. I picked a peck of peppers. There we go. Let me. Clap. Nice. Well done. Save. <laughs> I had to save close. because I've got an aggressive lawyer close. on the show. How large is a peck? How large is a peck? It is a quart. Oh, is it really? I didn't know that. I was going to say a pint. Something but... like that. It's a pint. I think you're right. I think it's 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 little. It's not like what I've been doing. All I know is well, I'll tell you what, if it's a choice, I don't know. I mean, if it's a you guys are more between, English than I am. You grew up in South Africa. So well, say, South Africa doesn't go by pecks and peppers. Now, if it's okay. a choice peppers. between a peck and a pint, I want the pint. Thank you very much. I just want the pint of beer, quite frankly. <laughs> right. With a little the little chili pepper on the beer. Oktoberfest is, is coming up. Yes. Oh, yeah. What's your, so. La Mesa. Have you done La Mesa? Oh, I I'm, I like El Cajon's better. It's the German American Society. In fact, I used to belong. Oh, cool. Um, and they do they bring a German band over, so it's a real cool. German band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they just do it upright, and, and Everyone, it's not nearly as Instagram. big as as La Mesa's. Look at Ward Heinrichs on Instagram. You'll see. <laughs> oh, I don't do personal things on Instagram or any of social you're, media. You're I only do business you're... stuff. <laughs> I know, but you've got your personal. Oh, did you change your photo on there? You had your Oktoberfest photo on there. Oh, yeah, with my daughter. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's yes, 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 yes. Ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, they'll see that. Yes, you're right. Every time I see you on Instagram, I'm like, I'm going to have a beer. <laughs> no, that was fun. And now she's old enough to drink. And I actually have three daughters and the two oldest can drink. Um, the the youngest still can't. But whatever. Maybe I'll let her have a sip. Oh, there you go. Be yeah. nice. There it is. Don't be too aggressive on the daughter's ward. You can no. do that in the court. Oh. Everyone, best employment <laughs> attorney, San Diego.com. Keep up with Ward there. Also, I'll give him a call if you have questions. He does uh, answer a call for a consultation uh, for free just to see how and what everyone needs and what he can do to help. And keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. Ward is here every fourth Wednesday. We always have a good time. And we mm -hmm. always we have 20 questions now. We went from 10 to 20 already. Ready. so we'll have to follow up one of the very first questions will be how was oktoberfest this year so oh we'll chat with you soon <laughs> it'll be great thanks thanks ward oh thanks, you're welcome ward. thank you